Hi children, hope all are safe at home. Today, let us start the 9th standard first lesson number system. So before going in detail, first let us see what are the main concepts in this lesson. Okay, the first one is different kinds of numbers. Second one, rational numbers. Third one, irrational numbers. Fourth one, operation on real numbers. And the last concept is laws of exponents on real numbers. Let us first recall what are the numbers we studied in lower classes. Okay. So first the counting numbers 1, 2, 3 etc are called natural numbers. It is represented by n. Next one, what is the next type of numbers? Whole numbers, isn't it? So what are whole numbers? Natural numbers together with 0 are called whole numbers. It is represented by w. Next we will see indices. So what are indices? Positive numbers, negative numbers together with 0 we called as integers. So do you know what is the representation of integers? Yes, very good, is that okay? So he said it is coming from a German word, Sachlen. It means to count. Rational numbers. Next let us see in detail what are the concepts in our lesson. Okay. So rational numbers, a number can be expressed in the form p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0 is called a rational number. So, see that the denominator if it comes 0, what will be the number? We can't find out, isn't it? Division by 0 is not possible. So, we will get indeterminate or infinite form. That is why they are given the special condition that a number can be expressed as p by q where p and q are integers and q should not be 0. Can you give some example for rational numbers? You can say lot of examples, isn't it? 3, minus 5 by 6, 7 by 8, etc. as our own. Isn't it children? Yes, very good. Next, let us see decimal representation of rational numbers. So, the decimal representation of rational numbers arises two cases. Can you say what are the two cases? Yes, the remainder becomes 0. If the remainder becomes 0, in some extent the division is coming to an end. So we can say that it is a terminating decimal expansion. Okay? So what is meant by terminating decimal expansion? If you are going in division, in some extent we are stopping the division and getting the remainder as 0. That pattern of expansion we called as terminating decimal expansion. 1 by 2 equal to 0 0.5. So, the, the division stops. So, we can say that it is a terminating decimal expansion. Second case is the remainder never becomes zeros. In these cases, we are repeating the division and we are getting the remainder, same reminders after some steps. In this type of division, we are having a repeated block of digits in the quotient. It is a non-terminating decimal expansion. Example, 5 by 11, 0 0.4545, etc. It is an example of non-terminating decimal expansion. So, rational numbers, first I gave you the definition. Let us see in terms of terminating and non-terminating decimal expansion, how we can define a rational number. Okay. So, a number can be expressed in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q not equal to 0 is a rational number or otherwise we can say if the decimal expansion of a number is terminating or non-terminating then we can say that it is a rational number. For example, 0 0.75. So, 0 0.75 we can express as 75 by 100 that is 3 by 4. It is an example of a rational number. So, without doing the actual division, how we can say that a rational number can be a terminating or non-terminating decimal expansion. So, let us see with one example. Okay. So, first you see 7 by 16. So, we know that if you are dividing 7 by 16, it has a terminating decimal expansion. So, without doing the actual calculation, I will explain with some formula how to find out whether it is a terminating or non-terminating decimal expansion. For that, see p divided by a number can be expressed as p divided by 2 raised to m into 5 raised to n where p is an element of z 
m and n r belongs to whole numbers, then we can say that it has a terminating decimal expansion. Otherwise, it has a non-terminating and recurring decimal expansion. So, the same example we can see here 7 by 16. So, the denominator is 16, is not it? So, first we have to do the prime factorization of 16, 16 equal to 2 raised to 4. So, can we express this as p by 2 raised to m into 5 raised to n? Yes, because 2 raised to 4 into 5 raised to 0 we can express as 16 because any number power 0 the value is 1. Okay, children. So, we can say that 7 by 16 has a terminating decimal expansion. Let us see one more example 13 divided by 150. You can do by prime factorization you will get 150 is equal to 2 into 3 into 5 square. So, can we write this in the form of p by 2 raised to m into 5 raised to n? No, never because 3 is a term in the denominator part, is not it? So, we can conclude that it has a non-terminating and recurring decimal expansion. Let us see what is the definition of irrational numbers. So, in English and I'll say we will say regular, irregular, is not it? The opposite words we are saying. Same that rational numbers we already studied. So, what is irrational numbers? Irrational numbers a number cannot be expressed in the form p by q where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0. Understood? So, the reverse the negative meaning of rational we will get an irrational number. Okay? Some examples pi root 2 root 3 are examples of irrational numbers. The other definition of irrational numbers, how you can say that? Irrational number is a number having non-terminating and non-recurring decimal expansion. Okay? So, rational number is terminating or non-terminating decimal expansion is called rational number, but an irrational number we can say that it is non-terminating and non-recurring decimal expansion. Next, let us see operation on real numbers. So, what are the basic operation we are doing in mathematics? You are very familiar with that, is not it? Addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. In the same procedure we are doing the operations on real numbers also, ok. So, let us see with examples. First one add 2 root 2 plus 5 root 3 and root 2 minus 3 root 3. First term is 2 root 2 plus 5 root 3 and root 2 minus 3 root 3. So, see that in algebraic expression how will you do the additions? First we will arrange the like terms nearby, is not it? The same procedure only we are doing in the operation on sets also. So, what we have to do means we have to arrange the root 2 terms nearby then the root 3 terms nearby, ok. So, 2 root 2 plus root 2 we will get 3 root 2 and 5 root 3 minus 3 root 3 we will get 2 root 3 ok. So, the final answer we will get 3 root 2 plus 2 root 3. The second one multiply 6 root 5 into 2 root 5. So, we know that root 5 into root 5 is 5. So, 6 twos are 12, 12 into 5 16. So, 6 root 5 into 2 root 5 we will get the answer as 60. The same way we can do the division and the subtraction also. So, you keep it in mind that the irrational numbers root 2 or root 3 terms are coming means group that nearby and perform the addition or subtraction or multiplication or division. Ok, understood children? Next, let us see rationalization of sets when the denominator of an expression contains a term with the square root the process of converting into a rational number is called rationalizing the denominator. Okay. For rationalizing the denominator, we are multiplying the numerator and denominator by the rationalizing factor. So, rationalizing factor we also can say that conjugate of the number. Okay. So, we will always concentrate on the denominator. In the question data, we will get the denominator in terms of irrational numbers. Okay. So, eliminating the irrational numbers and making into a rational number, we can say that as a rationalizing the denominator. For example, 
a plus root b and a minus root b are rationalizing factors to each other. That means if you are multiplying the product, we will get a rational number. Two numbers, if we are multiplying and we are getting that number as a rational, then one is the rationalizing factor of the other. a minus root b is the rationalizing factor of a plus root b or 5 plus root 2 is the rationalizing factor of 5 minus root 2, isn't it? So, what we have to do means in the middle symbol before the rational number if it is plus comes you have to change into the additive inverse minus. Then we will get the conjugate or rationalizing factor. For example, rationalize 2 divided by root 3. So, you see that 2 divided by root 3 in the denominator part we are having a irrational number root 3. Okay. So, rationalize in the denominator means what? We are converting into an equivalent expression with the denominator as a rational number, isn't it? So, the denominator is root 3. So, multiply the numerator and denominator by root 3, we will get 2 root 3 divided by root 3 into root 3, that is 2 root 3 divided by 3. So, see that here the denominator we got 3, that is a rational number. So, rationalizing the denominator of. Let us see one more example, 1 divided by 2 plus root 3. So, what is the denominator here? 2 plus root 3. So, what is the conjugate or rationalizing factor of 2 plus root 3? 2 minus root 3, isn't it? So, multiply the numerator and denominator by 2 minus root 3. So, we will get 1 into 2 minus root 3 divided by 2 plus root 3 into 2 minus root 3. So, the numerator is 2 minus root 3, but you see the denominator is in the form of a plus b into a minus b, isn't it? So, what is a plus b into a minus b? Very good, a square minus b square. So, the denominator we will get 2 square minus root 3 the whole square that is 2 minus root 3 whole divided by 4 minus 3 that is 2 minus root 3 that will be our answer. Next, let us see the last concept, loss of exponents on real numbers. So, already you study law of indices in your 7th standard and 8th standard, isn't it? So, what are law of indices? The same laws we can apply in the law of indices on real numbers also. Okay. Let a greater than 0 be a real numbers and m and n are rational numbers, then we can say these are the law of indices that is a raised to m into a raised to n equal to a raised to m plus n. You should keep it in mind the base must be same. Okay. The second one a raised to m the whole raised to n that is equal to a raised to m n. Third one a raised to m divided by a raised to n equal to a raised to m minus n. Fourth one a raised to m into b raised to m is equal to a b the whole raised to m and the last one a raised to 0 equal to 1. These are the law of indices or law of exponents on real numbers. So, Next, let us recall what are the concepts we studied in this lesson. The first one is different kinds of numbers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, operations on real numbers and the last one law of exponents on real numbers. Thank you.